All right, I think uh, it's time for us to start. Okay. So thank you both for being here today. We have two presentations. The first presentation by Dr. Wei uh, from the University of Cincinnati and the second presentation by Dr. Osman from uh, Louisiana State University. Dr. Wei, uh, thank you for, we see your PowerPoint up. So thank you for putting it up and the floor is yours. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, can you hear me, everyone? Yes. Uh, um, okay, great. I really appreciate this opportunity. This uh, also my honor and happy having this uh, the chance to share um, the results of uh, uh, from the research project we just recently done, and also this uh, the part of the results was published in a paper. Uh, in a translation research record number 2595. And I also want to acknowledge the co author, Dr. Zhuo Yao. Um, he is my formal advisor, PhD student. He has uh, made a, a great uh, a contribution to this research and uh, in, in many you know, the details ab about you know, determining the parameters involved in the model. And also, I appreciate. Uh, the Dr. Richard Lee and the Dr. Jonathan Corey for their uh, participation in this uh, the project. And also, finally, I, I want to acknowledge and express my big thanks for Dr. Ali Tof uh, Tofik and Dr. Sheriff uh, Ishaka for your uh, great you know, organization of this webinar. So that, uh, you know, uh, that's why I provide this opportunity for me. And uh, the, the title of this uh, um, the pr uh, presentation is Fuzzy C means Image Segmentation Approach for Axle Based Vehicle Classification. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in uh, uh, this presentation, I will give you a brief introduction of uh, the uh, address the problem and the background, and following by, uh, followed by the goal and objective of uh, the research and the methodology and the results in, uh, in support of the uh, proposed methodology. And finally, I will give you the brief conclusion and uh, our the idea for future work. And uh, perhaps you have to, uh, will know that uh, vehicle class classification data actually is about uh, the uh, percentage of the uh, the various the type of a vehicle involved in a traffic stream or any of the uh, highway. <clears throat> and this kind of data is uh, critical to almost all field of translation engineering and uh, management application, even you know, environmental, like my other project, we use the classification to estimate the traffic operation and uh, the, the, uh, the fleet uh, configuration impact on the uh, vehicle emission. So this kind of data is very important. But because of it, uh, the conventional technology, uh, the limitation, we use it to uh, each state, uh, you know, uh, uh, most of the state actually uh, use it to use the lens-based vehicle classification uh, because of that uh, widely application of intrusive detection technology like uh, inductive loops, detectors, and radar stations. But however, um, no single set of the vehicle lens work best for all the uh, states. And the traffic char characteristic may vary from state to state or use different defined beam-based uh, schemes. It is also technically uh, impossible to distinguish the uh, 13 uh, categories of vehicles as uh, recommended by the uh, Federal Highway administration and actually just the standard categories are uh, defined based on the number of axles of the, each vehicle and the vehicle type. So um, the axle based vehicle classification, however, um, the, this kind of schemes are conventionally limited by the capital cost for deployment of you know, the video based uh, the uh, surveillance or uh, the detection system and also uh, it uh, uh, caused these detection errors because of the, uh, the many, you know, the environmental factors. And uh, uh, from the technical standpoint, axle detection is more complex than the vehicle lens detection. Nonetheless, the vehicle-based system 
have uh, some advantage over intrusive um, DAXO-based vehicle classification method. For example, low impact on the road infrastructure and uh, low maintenance cost, uh, robustness of a feature detection from image and readily available at uh, you know, the intelligent transition system. And also we can install the, the camera anytime, anywhere. So that's an advantage. So that's why some of the states more uh, become more and more interested to, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 with attempted to use the video based the, the data. Um, fuzzy C means um, FCM image segmentation approach is um, the means of classifying the image pixels with RGB color intensity by using the estimated fuzzy membership and uh, giving a number of uh, clusters. There are um, the, uh, a number of approaches, but why we choose the fuzzy C mean image citation approach? And there are several you know, the reasons because of its uh, advantage. This kind of approach has uh, less uh, or needs less intensive com uh, computations compare with other image processing technique like uh, the object detection, age detection. And it is uh, unsupervised and always converges because it doesn't uh, require uh, training and a learning process or effect compared with, for example, the machine learning approaches. And also the parameters involving this modeling are highly flexible for calibration. Uh, that is uh, only the number of a pixel cluster uh, uh, I'll suggest in this study. And a conventional FCM algorithm is an efficient clustering algorithm that is usually used in a, a medical image segmentation. Usually they focus on the uh, static uh, the object. But uh, for transmission application, identify moving object that is a vehicle on the highway with the FCM based approach is actually a challenging but innovative work involving the axle-based vehicle classification. So based on this understanding, uh, we were motivated to set up the, the research goal to explore the uh, axle-based vehicle classification method by adapting existing uh, image processing techniques, specifically uh, to the study presented in this uh, paper, the op objective, um, are uh, twofold. Uh, first, um, to design a vehicle classification system based on the vehicle axle parameters using the FCM image segmentation approach. And meanwhile, well, uh, the uh, associated computing algorithm uh, was developed. And uh, second, uh, to conduct a proof of the concept study, that is uh, the case study, we will use you know, uh, the real world data um, um, the proposed algorithm is TEDIS by using the video of the traffic data specifically at I-75 freeway in the Cincinnati area, Ohio. And uh, this um, uh, the figure illustrates the, the uh, concept uh, flow chart of the technical path. Um, they uh, include the, the ma three major parts. First is uh, we got the video in the field, film the traffic or anywhere from the, any the monitoring station uh, where uh, the, the video monitoring devices uh, are deployed. And we convert with, based on the time of day and the selection of the, the interest uh, or it depends on the need of uh, any the stakeholder. We may uh, choose the video and uh, convert, enhance uh, the image <clears throat> and resize uh, the image in order to make the, uh, the object that is a vehicle to be clearly uh, uh, detected and seen from the video and by the algorithm. The second part is uh, the uh, vehicle axle extraction. That uh, included the several the subsystems uh, like uh, the image in initialization and the background and the foreground segmentation. Those are provided the, the, the basis to further um, identify the axle uh, the, uh, detection using the FRTC mean approach. And, and then we uh, uh, extract the, the parameters 
um, that we'll use to further identify the axon. So basically, in uh, the detection, we first identify detection zone. That means um, uh, that actually the results of the foreground to get uh, you know the vehicles being uh, detected, and then further identify the vehicle, the axle. And finally, we will, we will definitely use you know the real world data to make a calibration of those parameters and uh, to to increase uh, the accuracy. So this is a free part, and on the right side, actually, that is a list of 13 categories of the vehicle as recommended by Federal Highway Administration. Uh, again, those, uh, the type of vehicles uh, are uh, defined based on the number of axles and the vehicle type. <clears throat> this is a flow chart showing um, the, uh, uh, the major model involved in this, um, the algorithm. Uh, first, and, and, and I have a mission, definitely, you know, we need uh, the video frames and from the video to uh, digitize them into the frames. And then <clears throat> we go to the um, background estimation model. Uh, that is a very the fundamental, you know, the image, the data used uh, in uh, all the uh, following steps. And among a certain number of uh, the images uh, in our study, we selected 30 images to get the background image. And we, because we calculate the, uh, the average, uh, the digital uh, data that is uh, red, uh, gram, black, R, a GB, um, the, uh, uh, the pixel, uh, the data of each pixel and average them among all of the, the 30 images. So that because you know each of the moving the vehicle only uh, stay or showing in a very few number of frames. And uh, uh, so uh, in average, we can um, uh, field out those the moving the uh, object and then get to the background image. Next, uh, the model is a uh, uh, foreground extraction model that the purpose of this model is to um, detect it, uh, the vehicles. And uh, uh, just use any, the, uh, um, the image we uh, targeted and uh, uh, the su uh, uh, subject, the, the background image, and then we get uh, uh, also through other, the, uh, the sub models and uh, uh, in uh, iterative, you know, the calculation. And then we identify the, uh, the target or subject vehicles, <coughs> excuse me. And the next the model is axoparameter uh, extraction model. That means uh, 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 on the basis uh, uh, on, uh, on the basis of the extracted foreground uh, um, the image, and we further identify the axles. That includes the four steps. One is a perspective correction and a grid scale conversion, and uh, a digitized in a binary image that is a black and white toy, and then we circle the detection that uh, actually focus on the, uh, uh, the wheel or tire, and then identify the number of ax axles. So, and uh, output those data into the database. Um, here, showing you an example, uh, what does it look like, we, how we get the, the, uh, the background. So here is showing, you know, uh, uh, the 30 images, um, and uh, <clears throat> we can see the vehicle, uh, each vehicle showing on each uh, the, the frame. And we average, and based on the, you know, the different time and the spatial of these vehicles, I get the mean of each the pixel. And uh, uh, in this way, um, the, the, this algorithm uh, filled out the, uh, uh, the vehicles and then remain the things are actually the extracted background. And uh, next the thing we will using um, <clears throat> the uh, background image, uh, the data, and uh, uh, to be uh, that will be uh, subtracted from any you know the target image, and uh, then we get uh, a we uh, that uh, the algorithm in, involved in uh, optimization process to identify gradually you know, you know the clearly uh, detected uh, the object that is a vehicle. So this is showing the example what is it look like as uh, the results of this process. And the model and in fuzzy, how we determine um, uh, 
uh, using this um, the uh, the fuzzy mean clustering um, the image to uh, uh, to carry out the, the segmentation. And uh, here, uh, this slide is showing the equation that actually is um, um, the cost function, and uh, J F C M uh, that is uh, mathematically expressed by this equation. This is the uh, can be viewed as objective of the optimization because uh, uh, FCM algorithm is actually in uh, iterative, uh, you know, the calculation and uh, and uh, with the tar uh, the the, the ob uh, optimization objective. So that involved uh, that uh, contain the uh, uh, the measurement of the distance of uh, any um, the pixel and. Uh, uh, defined uh, the center of uh, the clusters, and uh, and uh, so when that uh, this is the function less than the defined uh, three showed value, this pixel will be identified as um, of the uh, uh, concerned uh, the uh, uh, cluster. Uh, here we we just use a k uh, uh, um, denoted the uh, uh, in general uh, in any of the clusters. And then uh, the algorithm FCM clustering based uh, the uh, image segmentation algorithm involved uh, the uh, those uh, six steps. And first, we set up the values for capital M N. Uh, capital M N is actually represent the number of pixels of uh, any the image that can be automatically detected by this algorithm. And M is a feed uh, the uh, the value of uh, the parameter involved in the calculation of uh, the the each pixel uh, and and the center and the central the center of the pixel and absolute uh, is used to measure the distance or define the distance of ratios for clustering and the second step initialized this the matrix of uh, the each of the pixel using the uh, the equation showing on the right side. And the next step is to set up the loop counter, and we use uh, the uh, uh, the variable b to represent uh, the number of uh, 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 the circulation of uh, the calculation. And uh, for each circulation, um, the uh, at the end step that actually involved in the step four, calculate the central the center vectors uh, of uh, the uh, defined clusters that are uh, uh, generally denoted by mu k. And uh, the, the right side, uh, the equation showing on the right side uh, is uh, uh, the model to calculate uh, the centroid in the center. And then update, you know, the, uh, uh, the pixels and uh, the centroid centers of uh, uh, the, uh, the clusters. And, uh, and then we'll compare, and just using the objective function to compare uh, this value if for less than the thresholds volume then to stop and this pixel is identified um, uh, as a part of uh, the cluster otherwise we would continue the next round of the calculation and then set up the b equals b plus one and uh, this is an iterative you know, process and uh, and and, uh, and until we, we achieve the um, the goal that means uh, we identify the pixels. Uh, what did they can do, uh, What did the cluster that uh, uh, falls in into? Uh, here, this is showing you the example of how we um, or better uh, visualize the uh, those uh, concept better understand uh, how we use uh, the or RGB uh, the data to identify the clusters and uh, you know the. Uh, are showing and how to identify the axle. So uh, as shown the, by this, um, uh, the figure, you know, you, we can see that the truck, the big truck, uh, there was a cross mark, the yellow color on the uh, tire. And uh, that uh, represent uh, 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 the color of a cluster. And that has average R, RGB value, um, uh, 58, 58, 58. That actually is the three dimension. So we may visualize that in a three dimension uh, coordinate system, like uh, showing on the left up, um, uh, up left of the, the figure, and that is showing uh, for each the dimension that the scale is uh, from the zero uh, to uh, 255. That uh, actually represent either the red, green, or the black uh, the elements of the color. 
And uh, the uh, uh, lower uh, left uh, uh, figure showing the, the defined clusters. And the cross mark actually is showing the one, the cluster that represent uh, uh, the tiger. So, and, uh, and also we can calculate what the percentage of uh, this, the cluster occupied the total number of the pixel, for example. In this uh, the image, the, the tire the cluster shares 4.23% of the total number of pixels in that image. So uh, this slide is showing you uh, uh, what the computing capability um, of the FCM clustering axle, the pixel, and, you know, uh, and is uh, using its uh, re related to the algorithm. And here they're showing you what it look like and the example the results and using the different uh, the image. Uh, and uh, the image one is the in input image that actually the result of uh, foreground uh, uh, extraction. And then we are using the fuzzy C-mean to get the clustering, the, the outcome, uh, showing the picture like the image two. And convert, then convert image to grayscale as shown uh, by the image three. And then we fill out the small uh, blobs uh, to generate a binary to, you know, the large object. Uh, so that uh, uh, then we, uh, uh, you know, uh, provide the basis of uh, the, the image to fill out the closed area. That means uh, for, uh, to fill the, the entire, uh, the tire with uh, the, the solid color. And then we further, you know, subtract uh, the image five and four, then convert it to uh, uh, the build binary rule uh, image data. And finally, identify, you know, the, uh, uh, the features, um, the detection and extraction. And actually, it um, uh, identify the tire is supposed to uh, be arrayed along a street line. Um, this the slides are showing the example results, and the one will apply to all type of the, the vehicle as defined by uh, or recommended by the Federal Highway Administration. Those are results are showing uh, uh, to all of the classes and uh, of class one through 13, but uh, for the limit of space, this slide is only showing the classes one through five. That includes the, the um, uh, outcome, a stage outcome from the original um, the image, and then we get actual segmentation and uh, holy filling, and uh, and then I generate the binary image, and finally uh, detected the axle. So the bottom, uh, the text word actually are the brief definition of each type of the, the vehicle. Um, and the next uh, slides showing the uh, the classes uh, example uh, results uh, from the classes six through ten. Uh, still, you know, showing the different uh, outcomes of the different stage. And the next one is uh, the uh, the example uh, showing uh, the, the stage outcome uh, from the class eleven through thirteen. Um, this is the summary of uh, the detection results. We have uh, the ground truth data. That is the video data. And, uh, and, uh, and then we use uh, the FCM, the algorithm, to detect the different type of a vehicle with uh, you know, a different number of axles. For example, uh, two axles vehicle is actually the uh, uh, generally is a passenger car or the, uh, the others, you know, the, uh, the small car. Uh, so uh, let's, let's still take the two axle vehicle X example. Uh, the ground truth data that is a, a, a video of the traffic uh, indicates um, a total number of uh, um, 1,322 um, vehicles that has uh, two axles. And uh, we assume this is true. And then the results from the FCM, the algorithm, and the running this algorithm, and uh, uh, detected successfully, uh, detected eight, 13 uh, vehicles with the two axles. 
So we can see that the detection success rate is 61.50%. This is uh, the example or the hour one, the first hour's data. And the second hour also showing the success rate is 61.81%. Um, if we look at this data only, we, we, we may uh, feel that it's not so high because usually we expect uh, you know, at least 90%, uh, uh, for example, that may be you know, a satisfactory result. However, our purpose usually um, from the uh, monitoring station and uh, vehicle classification actually uh, uh, review the percentage of uh, the different type of vehicle. So we can see that even when, because you know uh, the one uh, several reasons uh, there's some data missing from the running the algorithm because of some the vehicle like uh, different land that overlapped that can uh, will be uh, 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 detected the wrong object and uh, will be removed. So that the the, uh, the major reason uh, to missing some you know the uh, the vehicles from this uh, uh, the algorithm. But let's look at the next uh, uh, the summary. If we compare the um, the configuration, that means percentage of a different type of vehicle in the traffic stream, uh, through comparing the results from the ground truth data and the detected uh, the data from the algorithm, still use a two axle vehicle as example, and uh, and uh, uh, the. The traffic stream we observed actually have 94.6% uh, of a two axle vehicle. And uh, the FCM algorithm detected um, the 96.6% of uh, the two axle the, the vehicle. So we can see that this is the percentage of very close. And uh, from the standard point of application, this kind of error is acceptable. And even for emission, you know, the study that is very sensitive to the percentage of a different type of vehicle, so that's still acceptable for translation conformity, that is, you know, emission-related analysis. They are, too, also the same, the similar results, and uh, they are, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the percentage of the different type of vehicle is very close. So we can see that this is a, a kind of a very positive, the, um, uh, the indication from this, uh, uh, the, the results. So this kind of uh, the uh, uh, research, uh, you know, uh, will bring the uh, greater potential, you know, the benefit. So um, that is uh, uh, the uh, uh, major the results from this uh, the study. And the conclusion, um, the FCM the algorithm based on the uh, uh, video data, is a non-intrusive. That means this kind of you know the the uh, the data is obtained uh, uh, not based on you know the contact with the axles, but we just you know indirect contact through the image, rather than like the loops. We need to have some vehicle step on the loops and then contact the, the you know the vehicle the, between the service and uh, the wheel, and then. Uh, send uh, uh, the impulse to, to, to the system to get the data. But video, we don't need that. And uh, that is a low cost detection method. And uh, especially can be used as addition to existing uh, data, um, the sources uh, uh, existing use, usually referred to the loop detector and the reader, et cetera. And this the approach also provides an alternative way of uh, the vehicle classification data source when uh, you know the traditional and the approach are not available like uh, you know the rural truck the routes because you know and uh, it's a commonly complements the existing you know the uh, uh, vehicle classification data source uh, especially temporary because you know this video can be installed uh, anytime anywhere based on our need so um, this kind of uh, you know data source are highly uh, the video the devices instrument are highly flexible to, to deploy for the future and actually that result that project has been done um, uh, last year and uh, this project was founded by Ohio uh, Department of Translation 
and also with uh, a part of uh, maybe uh, possibly 20% from the federal. Um, but uh, it's our plan to continue to work on this uh, because that, uh, well, uh, we got uh, some, you know, positive, you know, the results. And uh, uh, so that's uh, very, we have interest to continue to explore this kind of the research. And uh, we may think to uh, uh, those kind of the, the point in terms of the uh, future work. And uh, we continually improve the algorithm to make the decision adaptable for the changes in lighting environment. Because, you know, in the dark, maybe that results, you know, the uh, um, higher the error. So that uh, still the challenge. And uh, develop a calibration protocol to increase the success detection rate. And, uh, and uh, test with the larger data sets. And uh, also, because Federal Highway, uh, the, uh, the standard classification, need not only the axle numbers, but also the configuration of the axles, so for example, the ax, axle spacing, so that uh, we will further uh, improve the algorithm to find a way to uh, extract the axle spacing with the acceptable uh, uh, um, accuracy rate. And then we will perform um, uh, performance you know, evaluation against other automated uh, vehicle classification method, even the technology. So um, I finally, I uh, uh, want by this chance uh, to acknowledge and uh, thanks for the support of Federal Highway and Ohio DOT through uh, funding the project. So that's all I plan to pr present. Uh, thank you so much for your time. So, and uh, I would be happy, happy to take uh, any question if, if you have. Thank you, Dr. Wei. That was very interesting. Do we have any questions from the audience? Not so, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how, how does that work? Uh, like I just I'm, unmute and ask questions or? Yes, please. Okay. All right. So thanks, Dr. Wee, for the interesting presentation. I actually have a question in um, um, slide number 17. Uh, sorry, number? 17, please. 17. This one? Oh, this one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the last column to the right, I see that um, percentages are, are higher um, uh, despite that the, uh, the, the tested results are, uh, are less um, did I miss anything in your explanation? Like, for instance, the four axle, we have ground truth seven and the tested results are one. Uh, and the detected, uh, uh, the detection success rate is 57%. How's that calculated? Uh, that uh, is, that's why we mentioned we need more data because that uh, uh, through our observation from the video that happened something uh, because when accidentally the two vehicles, the, uh, this vehicle, you know, uh, uh, overlapped with the other vehicle. And uh, actually that's uh, the two vehicles, but uh, you know, the uh, uh, algorithm can detect one vehicle, but based on the algorithm that cannot identify, surely identify this is really the one vehicle and which one. So in this case, this vehicle will be removed from the algorithm. I see. So I that's see. why, you know, uh, the, uh, some of the vehicles missing. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, but uh, the 57%, uh, I mean, how, how is it calculated? Is it like um, a one over seven or, I mean? Uh, uh, draw, is draw online? Maybe that's a typo or, or the data? Because we edit in, you know, uh -huh. I don't know. I, I need to double check that paper. I'm, I'm sorry. That's uh, maybe fine. maybe the type because when we convert <laughs> from the word but to the, uh, the the PowerPoint, this looks ugly. So we retype this uh, the the table. I see. So maybe that data is a typo. Uh -huh. that, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. No, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Thanks for that, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions from the audience? Uh, 
I, I will correct it and uh, resend this uh, PowerPoint to, uh, to Dr. Uh, Taufik. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Wei. Mm -hmm. So I, I do have a question. And I okay. Think, uh, I do not, uh, and maybe you have done this or maybe it could be an extension to the work. Uh -huh. But uh, have you considered the impact of uh, traffic, traffic flow, so level of congestion on the possible uh, accuracy of the results? Perhaps uh, in specific low traffic volumes, the video detection and this algorithm would be very efficient, but as it gets more congested, then the performance deteriorates? Uh, that's a very good question. As, uh, that actually, you know what? That's why uh, in the slides, when we talk about uh, the ob uh, goal and objective, we, I mentioned that uh, specifically to study present in this paper. Actually, the, another part of the research uh, uh, address this issue. And uh, uh, frankly speaking, when the congested traffic, the image processing doesn't work well because too many you know, overlapped vehicles. They're close to add, uh, each other. We also have another, you know, the, um, the uh, part of uh, the computing algorithm to identify if it's a congested, uh, congested uh, the, the, the traffic condition. We use uh, the manually collect, you know, use manually collect each image. Just like uh, I, I focus on uh, distinguishing the point of uh, the view. I click each frame. The problem in that, that uh, kind of, you know, the labor consuming, but right. we need a click. But other click, you, you just, the, the student or any research, just what they need to do, just a click, and then save that it will automatically generate all the, you know, parameters. So, but <coughs> image processing, automation function. So actually this, that project actually address a hybrid approach, including the one, automation and uh, semi-automation address light traffic and the uh, congested traffic. But the, this, what I present actually address, prefer, you know, to the uh, light traffic condition. <coughs> and is the, uh, so light traffic conditions is, uh, do you have a threshold, for example, for, or are you thinking of developing a threshold for the critical traffic volume or level of service where uh, you would recommend using this method? Yes, uh, we are preparing this paper, uh, 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 ready, uh, plan to submit a journal. That address the condition, what a kind of a traffic condition, basically based on the occupancy and the speed, and then identify what a kind of condition and the switch. And, uh, and uh, uh, yes, we, we consider. But we use a sample data, not a large scale of data, but they still need more data to test this algorithm. Thank you. That, that uh, one more, that actually a kind of a traffic flow, you know, the theory, you know, we identify different state of the traffic flow. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions from our audience? 